If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Well, Holly, let's go to the IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Dr. Rashna Patel is a medical marijuana doctor. She answers all types of questions about medical marijuana on YouTube. Um, please note medical marijuana at this point is not legal in Wisconsin. Welcome to the program, Dr. Patel, and we greatly appreciate you taking time to join us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, we want to start out with first, uh, what does medical, uh, what, what does a medical marijuana doctor even do? What, like, what is your job, I guess? Is what is my job? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the all important question. Um, so basically, um, uh, I walk people through how to safely use medical marijuana and CBD oil for their particular medical conditions. Um, and with medical marijuana, you know, I, I walk them through how to use the medical marijuana without getting high, without smoking it, and without getting addicted to it. Okay. Well, that's definitely sounds very helpful. Um, CBD oil is becoming more popular. Um, many people might not realize what CBD oil is. Could you tell us what CBD oil is? Sure. So marijuana makes two different chemicals. It makes THC and it makes CBD. THC is the chemical that causes the high, okay? CBD is a chemical that doesn't cause the high. And typically, I would say when it comes to medical benefits, it's about an 80-20 split, right? So most of the, about 80% of the medical benefits are derived from CBD um, uh, as opposed to THC. Um, and so CBD oil is basically, uh, uh, you know, that, so basically you have, you have different types of marijuana plants, right? They make different amounts of chemicals. Um, and some make more CBD and some make more THC. So basically what, um, what manufacturers do is they extract, um, from the plants that make more CBD than THC to make CBD oil. Now, one type of plant in particular that's known to make more CBD than THC is hemp. Okay. Now, we've seen, and, and you've probably seen this in, in your line of work, the uh, opinion about marijuana and medical marijuana is dramatically changing in the United States, but there still is misconceptions about the drug. And what do you feel is the biggest misconception that the general public has about mer- medical marijuana? Let's begin with that. About medical marijuana, that um, just by plain old using it, you'll get high off of it, okay? That's not necessarily the case. So um, most of the way that it's typically been used and the way it's, that it's portrayed in media is that people are using it as a recreational substance. And typically when people use it they, this way, they tend to, you know, overindulge. Uh, they take too much, and because they take too much, they, they get high off of it, but if you if you're using it medically, right, and you're and you're using the appropriate dose, then you're not going to get high off of it. Okay, uh, many Americans have high blood pressure. It's a it's a very common um, ailment. Uh, can medical marijuana help control that, or would CBD oil help, or both? Um, so so neither help. Um, clinically. I've had patients come into my office that have had a history of high blood pressure. Now, they're coming to me for something else, and they happen to have high blood pressure, um, and, and they've been using either a high THC product or a high CBD product, and, and neither, you know, they'll come back to me a year later, two years later, having regularly used um, either CBD oil or medical marijuana, and I see no change in their blood pressure. It doesn't get worse. But it also doesn't get better either. So whenever somebody comes to your, your office and, and what determines whether or not you uh, choose to prescribe them, you're in California uh, and where it's legal, what makes, is there times where you say, yeah, I'm not going to prescribe you this because it's not going to work? Or how does that, um, that visit go? Yeah, certainly. So recently, just want to sort of point out to your audience, in California, there's been a, a change in the law. Marijuana is now legal for recreational use. So um, it's really not even up to the physician to determine, you know, whether or not medical marijuana is going to be appropriate. People can just, you know, basically walk into a dispensary. Um, but for people in states where marijuana is 
uh, only legal for medical use. And then in those states, a couple of the different things can happen, okay? Number one, the State Department of Health has created a list of conditions for which the patient can get approved for medical marijuana. Um, uh, in California, I happened to be lucky when I was practicing in a, through a brick-and-mortar office um, because it was up to the, the physician's discretion. Uh, there was no limited uh, list of um, conditions. And so it was up to me, right? So, so yes, there were certainly patients that I turned away. Like, for instance, if they just came to me for blood pressure and that's, that's the only condition that they had, then I would say, hey, look, you know, it, th- this is going to be of no benefit to you because I haven't clinically seen any sort of changes. Um, and, and so, you know, honestly, you're wasting your money. Um, so, so that's important, right? To, to know that, you know, medical marijuana, CBD oil, they're not cure-alls. They certainly work well and better than, than prescription medications, but only for certain conditions. And that's the important thing to keep in mind. Now, with your practice and the, the data that you have worked and come up with and found, what was the biggest surprise in which you found that medical marijuana was fixing, curing, relieving uh, an element uh, in the human body of a disease of some sort? Sure. So the biggest change that I've seen is in patients with chronic pain, okay? And, and the biggest surprise to me was, so I went into thinking, okay, you know, what I predict will happen is that medical marijuana or CBD oil will probably just be, you know, another tool in, in, the, in, the, in the toolkit that patients have to manage their pain. And instead, what was going on was that um, patients were eliminating the use of prescription medications and just using medical marijuana and CBD oil to help manage their pain. And, and these are patients that have conditions that are generally considered resistant to conventional um, treatments, conventional medications, right? So, for instance, arthritis, um, for instance, fibromyalgia. These, you know, these are all sort of conditions that, you know, people sort of go through the whole um, gamut of, of over-the-counters, of prescriptions, um, uh, and, and, you know, nothing seems to work for them. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's what I found. Okay. Um, so many people might have the question about CBD oil or marijuana having drug interactions, um, especially if you do take something for high blood pressure or possibly um, pain medication as is, would there be a drug interaction? Or as you've noted that it doesn't lower blood pressure, so it might be okay for if you're taking one medication but using the CBD oil or medical marijuana for another ailment. Yeah, so this is a little bit, um, it's a broad question, right, because there's so many different medications on the market. Um, It's going to depend, right? So I can give you sort of classes of medications that medical marijuana and CBD oil I, that have uh, that have not interacted with. I haven't had any patients, you know, come back to me reporting any any adverse effects. So this would be things like uh, anti anxiety medications, medications for depression, um, high blood pressure medications. Um, now, research, on the other hand, has shown um, interactions, and a lot of it, what they found, is dose dependent. Right? So it depends on how much of of uh, the CBD oil or the medical marijuana you take. And, and the reason that there's a potential for interaction is because just like all other medications, uh, marijuana and CBD oil are also broken down in our liver. So they're all sort of competing for the same machinery um, uh, to break down. And so, um, so there's a poten- certainly a potential for interactions, um, but for a lot of classes of medications, I have not seen interactions. Okay. So how does one take CBD oil? I know there are some people, you know, just take it under their tongue. I've heard of people possibly smoking it. Um, what's the best way to take CBD oil? So there's many different ways, right? So it comes in, um, in the form of, uh, it can be inhaled. Uh, typically it's not smoked, um, uh, but it's, it's what's called vaporized. And um, vaporization is another method of inhalation. Um, and basically what it does is that it heats the oil rather than burning it. And a lot of times what you avoid this way is is the creation of what are called hydrocarbons, right? So this is essentially pollution that can be damaging your lungs. So that's one way, vaporization. 
Um, second way is ingesting it, right? So it can come in the form of food, like chocolate, like capsules um, as well. Um, uh, gummies are, are another form that it comes in. Um, it can also be, like you mentioned, like, be used under the tongue. And typically this form is, is known as a tincture. Um, uh, and then there's also rectal formulations of it as well. Um, so a wide variety of, of ways to go about using it. So we talked about the inhaling of it there. Uh, it's not really smoked. What does smoking cannabis, uh, how, how does can, uh, smoking cannabis affect the lungs, whether you're doing it m- medically or recreationally, legally or illegally? How does it affect the lungs uh, of a human? Yeah, so it, it affects it in a couple of ways. Uh, you know, I've always been of uh, 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 sort of of the, uh, of the school of thought that um, patients should not be smoking marijuana uh, because the long term it does do damage, right? So it causes inflammation. Um, it, it causes a buildup of phlegm. Um, uh, so all sorts of uh, issues that it can, it can cause long term. Okay. So with the now CB oil, CBD oil, that is that can be found in hand lotion, and it's not. Am I right on this? And that's, I think that's the hemp. That's the hemp in the. So there's that's two different realms of the the plant, correct? Yeah. So you can get CBD oil that that's extracted from hemp, and you can get CBD oil that's extracted from marijuana. Um, and they're both high in CBD. The only difference is is that the one from marijuana is going to be even higher in THC um, uh, compared to the one in hemp. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So you can get a, a, a topical uh, form of uh, CBD oil, right? So this comes in the form of of, of salves, of ointments. Um, and a common application of this is, for instance, for skin conditions like psoriasis, for instance, or eczema, um, any sort of inflammatory skin condition. Um, so, yeah, it is available in that form as well. Um, and, and also topical forms it can also be helpful for, um, for things like joint pain and, and muscle pain as well. Now, whenever we, whenever you uh, prescribe, and you're, it's legal to do in the state of uh, California and, and a number of other states in the the United States. Do you ha- is there a certain? And I've read this that growers are crossbreeding plants to get different strains. Does that affect the way you prescribe to an individual that is needing it for a medical purpose, or is it kind of a standard industry where it's? This type of it's it's identified before you buy it or you prescribe it. Uh, okay, so great question. Okay, so yes, uh, uh, breeders are um, uh, growers are breeding plants, and they're breeding it. Uh, main, they're breeding these plants to produce different amounts of CBD and THC, essentially, right? So um, uh, the amounts of CBD and THC that a plant makes is uh, dependent, one, on genetics, but two, also on the environment, too. So you can sort of manipulate the plant to create different amounts. And the important thing is, remember back when I said that about 80% of conditions are helped by CBD and 20% are helped by by THC? Mm -hmm. Um, There are also conditions that need both, both THC and CBD, right? So, So differing combinations help different conditions. And so, yes, that, that plays a big role in, in how I recommend to patients, you know, what combination of chemicals that I recommend that they use. Now, here's the thing. In terms of actually getting information about those combination of chemicals, so a lot of it is going to depend on the state in which you live and, and what sort of rules and regulations they have in place for laboratory testing, Okay. So a lot of states that have legalized for recreational use, they do mandate laboratory testing. And one of the things that they mandate testing for are the amount of the THC, of the CBD, so basically the chemicals that are in the product. And that way, as a consumer, you then know exactly what you're putting in your body and you can know what effect it's going to have on you. Okay. Now, you have some really great information out there. Um, I watched a lot of your videos. For people to find more about you, where can they find you? Sure. So a couple different resources. One is um, uh, my YouTube channel. Um, uh, You can just Google the medical marijuana expert uh, YouTube, and it's one of the first uh, results 
that sh- search results that shows up on Google. Um, and I'm always answering uh, commonly asked questions there. Um, the other resource that you have is my website, which is um, doctor, abbreviated DR, and then Rachna, R-A-C-H-N-A, Patel, P-A-T-E-L, dot com. Um, and the third resource I want to tell you about is that I'm also uh, uh, publishing a book, although it's not going to come out till March of 2019, but this book is entirely dedicated to CBD oil, right? So it sort of gives you a roadmap on, on um, you know, what you should be looking for in a CBD oil, um, um, how to make sure it's a high-quality CBD, CBD oil and whatnot. And actually, if you just, Subscribe to my email list through my website. I'll update you and let you know when that's, when that's out um, for purchase. Well, Dr. Patel, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to not only inform us but educate us on medical marijuana and, and some of the things that we need to be aware of about the, the, the drug uh, beforehand. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. I'm more than happy to help. And thank you very much. And- Thank you for checking out the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. For more, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com for full length in studio video and podcast replay of season one. Season two underway and added weekly. Tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.